Hey Gecko fans, this is Wally from Supreme Gecko. This is going to be a treat today because we're in front of the Australian rack. Get a lot of requests to see some Australians, to see animals in the facility. We're going to see them today. In the last month, I've had a lot of requests about seeing animals in our facility. Everybody knows that I do crested geckos and gargoyle geckos and leopard geckos and periodora picta. What a lot of people don't realize is that I do a lot of other animals. Now in the last couple of months I've done some other videos on some of these other animals like cave geckos and people want to see more. You want to see more of these type of animals. So today we're going to look at the Australian rack. But here's the gotcha with this rack. This was built probably about 12 years ago out of real strong plywood. It's getting old. This rack is going to come down sometime in 2022. I'll do a video on that so we can watch the de deconstruction and the reconstruction of this rack. I Im imagine a lot of really cool things with this rack. Right now though, we're sitting at about 35 different tubs for geckos. Now this has worked out really well for me in the past. It's just not working out anymore. In fact, I've moved a lot of animals off this rack into other enclosures in preparation, but we still have three different groups. Actually, we have five different groups still on this rack. African fat tail pair, and we have about eight or nine leopard geckos. This rack works really well for miscellaneous animals, but the intent was for this area to be an Australian area. Now, we're going to look at a couple of Australians here today, but there's also other rare geckos that you're going to really enjoy seeing off of this rack. Now, we could start over here on the left, but that's a pretty special animal. They're all very special, but I'm going to start over here on the right with some Pachydaculus rangei. Now, these rangei, I'm going to go ahead and set up the cameras here, but these rangei are sand-dwelling, burying geckos. They are not Australian. They come from Africa. Now, this is going to be a very different view on these animals. I'm not going to highlight them individually. By pulling them out of the enclosures, this is how we have them set up. And this is pre-breeding season, so in the next month or so, I'll introduce them in other enclosures. Let's go ahead and feed this one. I'm only going to put in one cricket in the enclosure right now because I know that this range eye male just went through a shed. In this enclosure, we have two different hides. One of them I keep very, very moist. The other is more dry. There's heat tape on the back. It's actually heat cable, and that's kept at about 90 to 92. We have a water dish. We have a mealworm dish. Very, very simple. This is really place in. That's all that I have in this enclosure, and they love it. They'll burrow in occasionally, but occasionally they'll pop out like we see now. Let's go ahead and take a look at the range eye female. Now this range eye female is a lot less shy than the male. Same exact setup, sand, a mealworm cup, a water dish, and I have two hides in here as well. One of them has uh, the sand moistened underneath. I'll go ahead and put the hide back in. We'll take another, a look at another gecko. This is the first Levis Levis. Let's go ahead and take a look. Again, same kind of uh, setup, sand, water dish, mealworm cup, and usually... This female is underneath that black hide. There's our hide with the moist sand underneath. And let's see if we can find that female. This is a chunky Nephurus levis levis. Nephurus levis levis, sometimes I've heard. Let's see if we can give it a, a cricket and see what happens. She's going to go ahead and chase it down. 
I always feed just one or two crickets to these lovus lovus all the time. They're just not used to seeing a lot of insects in Australia. Let's take a look at the other female that I have for lovus lovus. Okay, we'll get a really quick look at this one. Same type of setup, sand, mealworm cup, water dish, two hides, one on the warmer side, and it's uh, damp underneath that, and one on the cooler side. Let, she's always under the cooler side one. Let's see how she looks. This is a chunky Lavis Lavis. Let's go ahead and put this back and let's find the meal. Okay, this is going to be tricky because the tub is a little bit higher. Let's go ahead and pull this out and we'll take a look at the male. And again, you can see the same exact setup and there's the male sitting under one of the hides. See, he is a lot smaller than the females. And let's take a look at those last animals. This is going to be fun. I tell you folks, this is a real challenge maneuvering around in here. I have about a foot and a half of space in between these uh, different racks. It works for me. It works when I'm working down here. We have a rolling uh, cart. We can put our supplies on there and just go through the whole room. But as far as recording animals in here, it just doesn't work at all. I really appreciate your patience working with this setup. Oh my gosh, she's right there. I'm going to see if I can get a better light on her. Actually, this is the boy. This is Chondrodactylus and Gullifer. And he is looking for food right now. Take a look at those colors. Unbelievable. This animal has me so excited. I cannot wait to work with the, uh, the male and the female this summer. If you know Chondrodactylus, you know that they're a really cool looking animal, but basically a brown beige animal with some striping, some barring. The reds on this animal are undescribable. And I tell you what, it's jumping around here looking for more food. These animals are not picky eaters whatsoever. We'll go ahead and leave the male alone and we'll see if we can get a picture of that female. Now I can tell you the female isn't as aggressive, isn't uh, as outgoing as the male is. So we'll see if we can get in here and see it. Usually that male sits under this very first hide. It looks like it's... Let's see if we can pull this out just a little bit more to see that male. Kind of a little shy, I tell you. We'll let this one get back to its enclosure and eating in just a little bit. All three of those groups are going to be breeding this spring and summer. I'm really, really excited. Love the range eye. They're a fantastic digger. It's just fun to watch their behavior. The Lavis Lavis, beautiful, beautiful animal, Australian animal, and these Chondrodactylus and Gullifer. I've been looking for these animals for a long, long time, years, 15 years or more, and I'm so happy to have them. Make sure that you watch this video right here to see our first experience with Chondrodactylus and Gullifer and what happened. Stay tuned because I'll show more videos on these animals in the near future. Thanks for watching.